Ukraine is showing off some of the Russian military equipment it has captured and destroyed over the past three months. Our Matthew Chance has a story for you from Kyiv. Well, this looks like the aftermath of a ferocious battle, but it's in fact an exhibition that's been assembled here in the centre of the Ukrainian capital using real Russian military hardware that has been destroyed on the outskirts of the city. Obviously, this is a, this is a T-72 uh, Russian tank, absolutely devastated, of course, by uh, some kind of uh, anti-tank weapon. If we walk across here, uh, there's some missiles on the floor, the casings have been put on show. Um, an anti-aircraft gun here with its, with its turret that people can, can come and look at. It's all here for the benefit of the people of Kiev to show them the weaponry that has been essentially threatening their lives over the course of the, fourth, of the, of the last four months. I spoke to one uh, visitor here and you can see there are lots of people here taking photographs, um, showing their children you know, what, what the Russians have been throwing at them over the course of the past several months. One guy told me, they said, look, it's the first time we've actually seen this stuff up close because even though it's been very, you know, on everybody's television screens, not everybody's had the chance to come this close to this kind of Russian armor. Um, and he says it's important because seeing this Russian weaponry destroyed in this way makes us believe that we can win. And I thought that was a really poignant um, yeah, remark by just one of the visitors we spoke to here uh, looking at this destroyed armour in the centre of the Ukrainian capital. Matthew Chance, CNN, in Kiev. President Zelensky says every day Ukraine is losing about 60 to 100 soldiers in combat. In an interview, he said the situation in the east is very difficult and Russia's blockades of shipments in the Black Sea means the country is facing a food crisis. CNN correspondent Melissa Bell is in Zaporizhia for us. Uh, Melissa, great to see you. I want to start off with what we see in Severodonetsk, and we know the Ukrainians are saying that 70% of the city is now under Russian control. What do we know at this minute about evacuations and, importantly, what the Ukrainians are planning in terms of counter-offensive? Well, of course, it is, it is the plight of those 15,000 civilians still believed to be inside the city that is uh, utmost on the minds of everyone as those uh, Russian advances are made. And uh, just to give you an idea of that part of uh, the region, the military advantage that the forces have at this stage is such that if Severodonetsk falls, uh, the only town in Luhansk that will remain, a uh, sizable city that will remain in the hands of Ukraine will be Lysychansk. And that is important, of course, strategically, if you look at a map of that region. And that is why the battle for Severodonetsk has been as fierce as it has these last few days. Uh, but to your question, Eleni, it is because that battle is particularly fierce in the north that we believe uh, Ukrainian forces are focusing now on the counteroffensive uh, in the south of uh, Ukraine. So uh, here I'm speaking to you from Zaporizhia, which is uh, roughly uh, halfway uh, down that line that separates Russian-controlled Ukraine today from the rest of the country. And if you look at that map, Severodonetsk is that very northern tip. Uh, Kherson is at that very southern tip. And what's been happening over the course of the last few days is Ukrainian armed forces really focusing on trying to get back that town of Kherson. It matters strategically. Uh, because it is the only point west of the Dnieper River that is currently in Russian hands. Uh, and of course, by focusing their firepower on that, Ukrainian forces believe that they can make a difference to the overall battle that's being fought. Now, uh, that, of course, continues to be fought here. Uh, from where I'm standing, uh, 30, we've been hearing the sirens over the course of the night. It is the villages that are 30 kilometers, 60 kilometers southeast of here that have been being shelled again overnight and i think that is one of the reasons uh, that ukrainians are very relieved to hear of the news that uh, president biden is going to uh, go down the route of uh, allowing some of those weapons that they've been calling for to be uh, given at last because it is towns like this zaporizhia where you've been feeling the pressure of that russian advance and remember that uh, the weapons that Russia has in its hands, which are uh, not just the artillery that have allowed it to, with such devastating effect, to take control of uh, so much of uh, southern and eastern Ukraine over the course of the last few weeks, but itself has those longer range rocket systems that Ukrainian forces have been asking for and that it believes will make a big difference to protecting towns like Zaporizhia.
Absolutely. And Melissa, look, the Ukrainians have been very vocal about the fact that there's a big possibility they'll lose the war, particularly in the east, if they don't get long range missiles. Now, the president a few days ago said no missiles that can actually reach Russia, but now saying heavy weaponry that will assist the Ukrainians. Do we have any more detail about what this weaponry is and what these missiles can actually do? We do because of the opinion piece that President Biden has in the New York Times today. And I think it's significant that Moscow had made plain that a red line, as far as it was concerned, was the kind of weaponry, those long range rocket systems uh, that could reach uh, up to 300 miles and that could threaten Russia. It had made clear that if those weapons found themselves in Ukrainian hands, uh, that would be a red line for Moscow. So I think what we understand from the type of weaponry that Washington has now made plain, it is willing to give Ukrainians that we're talking about, uh, first of all, uh, rocket systems that have a range of about uh, 40 miles or so, 50 miles or so, no more than that. So precisely the kind of range that would make a difference in towns like Zaporizhia, also the kind of munitions uh, that would make a difference. And bear in mind that it isn't that Ukrainians don't have any of these long range rocket systems. It's simply that the kind they have are out of date. So we're talking about range, but we're also talking about the ability of these systems uh, to be, to have that modern capacity, not just of the rocket systems themselves, but the munitions that Washington has been providing and says it will continue to provide uh, to, to guide themselves to their targets. So it is about the range. It is about the modernity, the, the high tech quality of the weaponry that Washington says it is now willing to give. Them. Melissa Bell, always good to speak to you. Thank you so much uh, for that context.